A few days back, I went trekking with my younger brother Nishan. Interestingly, this fun trip became a beautiful lesson in geometry for him. Thankfully, we had recorded it on camera, so let me share it with you. Look, the stars appear much brighter here than the city. Yes, and I can also see a group of stars that appears like a question mark. I want to draw this. Can you help me? See, first you draw points showing the position of stars and then you join them. Oh, it seems as if I am giving you a geometry lesson. Geometry? What is that? Geometry is a branch of mathematics that deals with shape, size, position of figures and properties of space. Oh, please tell me more. To tell you more, I'll have to take you around 2300 years back to a man named Euclid. 2300 years? Wow! Euclid was a Greek mathematician and was known as the father of geometry. In 300 BC, he wrote a book in which he organized and proved all the knowledge of geometry we have till date. Geometry is the English translation of the Greek word geometron, where geo means earth and metron means measurement. But what is the use of geometry? Geometry helps in understanding different shapes and their properties and relations in real world. Geometry has applications in the field of architecture, astronomy, designing clothes and machinery. In fact, geometry has applications in almost all spheres of life. Oh, wow! And this all begins with a point. A point? Yes. Look here. These dots that we mark to show stars are points. The almost invisible tiny dot gives an idea about point. A dot as small as you can imagine. Oh, this is a point. How can this be so important? Point is the most important concept in geometry, howsoever small or insignificant it may seem. A point has no length, no breadth, no thickness, no shape or size, yet it shows a definite position. If a point shows a position, how do we differentiate these points? We denote a point by capital letter. No geometrical figure can be drawn without beginning with a point. Every geometrical figure should be named and that starts by naming the points. Many points come together to form a line. A line? Yes. A line is a straight path that extends forever in both directions. You mean it goes on and on? Correct. That is why we draw two arrows on it on either side to show it never ends. It contains countless number of points. We can never draw a complete picture of a line. How do we differentiate two lines? How do we represent them? We represent a line using small letters. Like I have denoted this line by small letter M. A line can also be represented using any two points on the line. And how can we do that? A line through points A and B is denoted as this. We put this small line with arrows on both sides to indicate that it extends indefinitely in both the directions. So, if I join any two of these stars, which are like two points, will that be a line? No, that would be a line segment. Line segment? What is this now? A line segment is a part of a line. It has two distinct endpoints. It does not go on forever. If I have point A, and point B, then I can join them in different ways. Are they all line segments? No. The shortest route 
that is the straight line joining points A and B is called the line segment. It is represented as this. Okay. So it does not have arrows on top like a line has. Correct. This signifies that it has end points. Points A and B are the end points of this line segment. If I fold this paper, I get a line with two end points. This is a line segment. Now can you think of some examples of line segments from your day to day life? Yes, joining two points of a tube light, edge of a book, edge of a ruler. So a line extends forever in both directions, but a line segment has two distinct end points. Wait, does that mean you can never measure a line? Right Nishan, you cannot measure a line, but you can measure a line segment. We can measure line segments with the help of a ruler. Great, so I can now complete my diagram. This is how that collection of stars above look like. See, points E, F, G all lie in one line. Yes, they are collinear points. What? I'll explain. Three or more points are said to be collinear if you can draw one line that will contain them all. So among all these given points, B, C and D lie on a straight line, hence they are collinear. But points C, D and F are non-collinear. Similarly, points A, D and E are non-collinear. Okay. It's too late now. Let's go back to our tent. Wait, I'll switch my torch on. Oh, this reminds me that I forgot to tell you about rays. Rays? Yes, a ray is a part of line. A ray starts from one point and goes endlessly in one direction. I have heard about sun's rays. Is it the same as the rays you are talking about? Yes, if you consider sun's rays, then they start from one point and move endlessly in one direction only. Here, they start from point A, point B lies on the path of the ray. It is denoted as this. No matter what the direction of rays be, the arrows will always point towards right. So if PQ is a ray, its starting point, that is P, is also called the vertex. Q is another point on the ray. Remember that Q is not the starting point of this ray, so we cannot denote ray PQ as ray QP. Now I can complete my diagram with points, line segments and rays. Perfect. So a point is the almost invisible tiny dot. Many points come together to form a line which is a straight path that extends forever in both directions. A line segment is a part of a line and has two distinct end points. A ray starts from one point and goes endlessly in one direction. Now let's sleep. Tomorrow we have to get up early and go for trekking. <laughs>